Okay, I wanted to make a short video about some of the new integrations between Climate Engine and the Rangeland Analysis Platform. The RAP is comprised of two data sets that provide valuable information on vegetation type and vegetation cover, as well as rangeland production for any location in the continental US. And it's near and dear to my heart because I worked on the RAP for uh, about a year when I was at University of Montana. Adding the wrap to Climate Engine makes it possible to calculate trends, look at anomalies, uh, do all kinds of cool statistical summaries that you wouldn't be able to do in an existing tool. This video will just be a short demo. There's a lot more detail and things we can do, but hopefully this will demonstrate some of the core capabilities and uh, in future demonstrations, we'll get to more. But without further ado, let's get into it. You can find the Rangeland Analysis Platform at rangelands.app, and I want to give you a very short peek at the main app. We'll zoom in on a location near my home in Fort Collins, Colorado. You can see that you can use the app to both map vegetation data and extract time series data on vegetation cover, annual biomass, and 16-day biomass. It's a great tool, so be sure and check it out. And the wrap is now being stewarded by USDA ARS, who has made all of the wrap data available for use in Climate Engine. In this video, I'm gonna go through several examples, and the first is gonna be analyzing change in annual herbaceous cover. This is gonna to equate to cheatgrass and medusa head, annual plants that in much of the West are a significant nuisance or, in, or are invasive. So we can find the wrap data under remote sensing data sets and we're gonna select wrap cover, and then we're gonna select annual forb and grass, and we're just gonna map annual forb and grass cover uh, in the kind of southwestern US for the year 2022. And we'll get a nice map of annual forb and grass cover. We can go and query individual locations to see how much uh, cover there is at any location. This is a nice way to kind of explore the data, we can see that there's really high annual cover in this particular location, uh, 62%. And uh, we can take things further by mapping trends in annual forb and grass cover. What this is going to show is over the last 36 years, how annual herbaceous plants have increased across uh, really much of uh, northern Nevada and much of the, the west. We can tweak our color bar to our liking, and this is going to show in the deepest red locations that have 70% more annual herbaceous cover in 2022 than 1986. We can do a similar trend analysis using tree cover, and this can be really insightful as well. So tree cover is again under the wrap cover data, and we can choose tree cover. And here we're just gonna jump straight into mapping trends in tree cover from 1986 to 2022. And we'll again look over the Western US. We see some interesting patterns here in the Northwest corner of Utah. And uh, we can really see where there are specific locations where uh, tree cover has decreased. These correspond to a paper by Jason Reinhardt and colleagues from a few years ago, looking at impacts of management and wildfire in pinyon juniper locations. And we can really see those treatments and fires on the landscape in these maps. Then if we wanna zoom in and analyze a specific region, we can draw a polygon. We can also upload a shape file or there are a number of ways you can bring in your locations you're interested in. And then we can get a time series of tree cover. What year did this change really happen? And we see that in that period around 1999 or 2000, there may have been some sort of fire or, uh, or tree cutting in this location that reduced that tree cover. And that can be really valuable information and we could dig in farther to other vegetation changes that occurred around then. So really in this video, I'm, we're really just scratching the surface of what you can start to do. And we hope that you'll explore some of these data sets in more depth. For the next data set we'll look at, it'll be the rangeland production data set. And we're gonna look at anomalies in rangeland production. So this data set's located again under remote sensing and we can click down to wrap production 
and we're going to look at total production. There are several different ways that you can calculate anomalies in Climate Engine, and here I'm going to demonstrate percent of average conditions, which will give us a map indicating whether the selected year was above, below, or at average relative to the year range selected by the user. So we can take the entire period of record from 1986 to 2021, and then we can compare the most recent year, 2022, to that. And what we'll get is a map that shows some patterns that really make sense. It was a big monsoonal year in uh, the southwestern US, and so we see a lot of production in western New Mexico and eastern Arizona. We see some drought in the Great Plains in western Kansas and western Nebraska. And um, so this can be really insightful. Of course, we're looking over a huge area and there's a lot of variability that you can dig into for any particular location. As we uh, start to look at a specific location, um, I wanna highlight this example, comparing 2021 to the period of record in southeastern Montana. And we'll see that it was a below average year, but not remarkably so, seemingly. You know, this still seems to be in mostly the 70 to 90% of average range. But another way we can look at these data is by looking at percentiles. What that means is it's going to show for 2021, how did that rank against the previous 35 years? And this tells a different story. We can see that many locations were in the two to five percentile or even the one percentile, showing that although these locations may have been 70 to 90% of average in some cases, that may still be one of the worst years on record. And so the last example that I want to highlight is one that we're really excited about. And this is analyzing uh, rangeland production in real time. We've just added the RAP 16 day data to Climate Engine. We can again find the 16 day production data under the remote sensing type. And this is a really important data set because it provides data with only about two weeks of lag time. And so we can monitor rangeland production from the period from January 1st to May 9th, providing a snapshot of this year to almost the current date. And then we can map anomalies in production just like we did before, compared to the historical period from 2000 to 2022. And so we can assess whether production is above or below average for this point in time. And we're going to see a lot of variability. Uh, this is in Western Nevada. Some locations are uh, significantly above average, others are below average. It's been a really wet year in this part of the world uh, this year, but it's also been a cool year. So we see some kind of mixed uh, signal here. And so we have all of the Bureau of Land Management grazing polygons loaded into Climate Engine, so we can get some nice summaries for any uh, grazing allotment we might be interested in. So I'm just selecting one here in uh, kind of Northern Nevada, the Blue Basin allotment. And this is not one I have any specific familiarity with, but we're gonna look at how does this period of uh, January 1st to May 9th for this year compare to you know, the previous years. And we see that this year is quite a bit below average compared to some other years that we've had, especially in kind of the mid to late 2010s were uh, really productive for this particular allotment. The other really cool thing we can do in Climate Engine is look at rangeland production alongside climate data. So if we bring in precipitation data for this water year to date and overlay that onto the rangeland production data, we're gonna see some pretty strong correspondence as we might expect where wetter than average years correspond pretty closely to more productive than average years and drier than average years are less productive. Now this year is kind of an anomaly because we have uh, above average precipitation but below average production. And I think that's really a function of just having really, uh, really cool weather so far. And of course we can look at that. Instead of looking at precipitation related to production, we can look at temperature related to production. So if we take maximum temperature over the period of February 1st through May 9th, kind of the season that would influence uh, that growing condition, that spring uh, green up period, we'll see that in fact this year was among the coolest of the last 20 years. And so there are just a lot of ways that you can uh, start to 
analyze your locations using Climate Engine. And hopefully this video did a good job of highlighting some of those use cases. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. It's been fun to go through some of the demonstrations of some of the capabilities of Climate Engine using the wrap. If you want more information about the Rangeland Analysis Platform, check out the, uh, the website at rangelands.app, which is now managed by the USDA ARS, who's doing really great work uh, keeping all the data flowing and um, making it more openly available. Uh, if you like the videos that you're seeing, be sure and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. And we really appreciate any feedback. Want to do more of these types of videos to help users like you to get the most out of Climate Engine and hope to catch you next time. Thanks. Thank you.